What's up everybody, welcome back. So let's continue working on our inventory system. In the previous episode we set up some pickups, we have a name displayed above them and we can interact with them and they will be destroyed. So in this episode we're going to make sure that the pickups in the level will save and load. Then we're going to start setting up the inventory on the player character. So if you like this series please consider leaving a like on the videos and if you want to become a member of the channel you can check out the description of the videos and if you want to join the discord also just check out the description the links are down below. So let's uh, just get on with the video. So we're going to start by adding a new structure and that structure is going to define all the types of inventories that we are going to have in the game later. So this is going to be for the player inventory but also what's inside of a pickup or what's inside of a container. So we're going to use this structure a lot. Um, so let's create it, blueprints and then new structure and this is going to be the inventory contents. And let's open it up. So this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, the first one is going to be the item row name. And that's a name variable. And the second one is going to be the item amount. And that's going to be an integer. And that's really all we need in here. So now we can save this and close it down. And let's add it to our pickup actor first. So let's open up the pickup that we created in the previous episode. And we're going to add a new variable in here. And let's make that the uh, item contents. So uh, this is actually just one item. So you really don't need to add an array in here. But we're going to do it anyway. So that way if we decide later that we want to have different types of pickups that uh, could possibly contain more items than we have it set up. So uh, let's turn this into our inventory contents structure and we're going to turn it into an array and make sure that it's instance editable and exposed on spawn. And then we are good to go for the pickup so we can close it down and save it. And now let's set up our third person character so let's open that one up as well so first of all we're gonna add the inventory array in the character as well so let's call this the player inventory and that's going to be of our inventory content structure and that's an array now we want to make sure on the player character that this is actually replicated so for replication we're gonna turn on replicated and then we are going to add the first function that will add an item to our inventory. So let's create a new function and call it add item to inventory. So the first thing we are going to need is an array of the pickup item contents. So let's add an input and that's the pickup contents. So that's an array of the inventory contents. And then the second thing we need is an actual uh, BP pickup reference. So just a reference to the uh, pickup actor that we created. So let's call it BP pickup. And that's going to be a single variable of the BP pickup type. There we go. So uh, let's just start creating this function. First of all, we need a for each loop and we're going to do uh, this for each loop for everything that's in the item contents. So for everything that we want to add to our inventory and we are going to create a bunch of local variables. So let's first track of the array element and break the inventory contents. Then we want to uh, promote the item row name to a local variable. So local item row name or item to add, that's probably a better ID. So let's call this local item to add. And then the new amount, promote it to a local variable, local amount to add. And then we're also gonna create a boolean and that's local is new item. So local is new item. And that's a single boolean. So we're going to drag this one in and set it to true. And then we're going to start a second for each loop. So let's add another for each loop over here. And this time we want to drag in our player inventory. So plug it in over here. 
and we are going to check if the item that we want to add uh, is actually already in the inventory or not so first of all let's break the array element over here and then we want to check if the item row name is the same of the item row name that we're going to add so let's do equal to and compare it to the local item to add so let's add a branch over here and plug it in so i actually made a small mistake already because we want to use a for each loop with break over here so let's drag off the player inventory and look for break and then let's move over the pins and get rid of this one there we go so now uh, if this is true we want to make sure that we set the local is new item to false so we have that actually set up and then we are going to create another local variable and that's the local item index so local item index and that's an integer so we're going to set it over here to the index of the array oh. so that's the index inside our player inventory there we go and then we also want to know how many we already have in our inventory so let's drag off the item amount and that's also going to be a local variable and that's the local uh, current amount in inventory and that's an integer so that's fine plug it in over here as well and then we're going to connect this one to the break over here so if this is true then we know what we need to know and we can stop our for each loop and if at the end over here at the completed pin our variable is still true that means uh, it is a new item because it didn't find one with a matching name so we're going to plug in our is new item bo uh, boolean over here and then uh, we can set up our new amount in the inventory so we're also going to create a local variable for that i know we have a lot of them but uh, we are going to expand this function later to update the hud and things like that and then we're going to need them as well so uh, they might seem a bit useless sometimes now it's easier to just add them right away so let's create another one and that's our uh, local new amount so if it's a new item then we can drag this in and simply plug in our amount to add so that's local amount to add and plug it in over here and if it's not a uh, yeah if it's not a new item so it's already in the inventory then we need to make sure that we add our current amount in inventory to the amount to add so let's add this and then the local amount to add and plug it in so we have our new value stored as well um, let's continue with the upper branch so we're going to drag in our player inventory and it's a new item so we're going to add an array element oh so add plug it in over here drag off the struct and we're going to make an inventory content structure so we can plug in our local item to add and then also the local new amount plug it in over here and that's really all we need to do if it's a new item so i'm going to add a print to the screen over here so let's print it so we don't have an inventory widget yet so this uh, way at least we know something happened so i'm going to right click and look for a format text node and in here i'm going to say added new item and then open bracket a close bracket and i'm gonna add a second variable in here by the way then i'm gonna say uh, times and then open bracket b close bracket plug this into our print and then for the a pin i want to know the item name so let's just plug in the item to add and for the b pin i'm gonna add the new amount so that way we know what currently is inside of our inventory and that's all we need to do in this branch so if it's uh, if it is a new item or not a new item i'm sorry uh, we need to add an array element as well 
So we're going to drag in our player inventory and then set an array element so we can override an existing one. Plug it in. And this time we need the index. So that's the local item index. And then we can make a new content structure again. So drag off the item, make a new content structure, plug in the item to add and the new amount. And that's good to go as well. Then again, I'm going to add a print and this time I'm going to say added item without the new. So I know it's an existing item. There we go. So this should be the function to add everything to our inventory. And then let's go back to the first for each loop, drag off here and we're going to return. So we know this is where we need to continue later. Um, I don't think we need to add anything in here anymore. Checking my notes quickly. Now this should be good to go. So uh, right now, if we go in game, let's compile, save. And we have a few pickups in the level. So if we go back to our pickup, this time we need to define the item contents. So in the details panel, let's add an array element over here. And this is going to be uh, an orb. So we're going to make sure that the row name matches the row name over here, but it doesn't really have to. So the uh, upper item row name defines the looks of the pickup, uh, the mesh, uh, the name above it, all that kind of stuff. And the item contents define what's actually inside there. So it makes the most sense to keep them matched up, but they don't have to. So let's uh, just make this uh, two orbs. And then we're going to go to the second pickup. And this is going to be two fans. So let's add a new item to the array. And this time it's going to be a fan. And it's going to be two of them. And the last one are the dishes. So let's add two dishes in here as well. And now if we go in game, this should print to the screen. Uh, it doesn't because we need to go into our BP pickup and in here we need to call our new function. So we have our interact and that's the interface function and we're passing on our player in here. So we can simply drag off the player and call our add item to inventory. And in here, the BP pickup is a reference to ourself. And we can simply plug in our item contents array over here. And we need to make sure that it's hooked up. So now it should work. And there we go. So we are adding two orbs, two fans and two dishes. So this doesn't actually save yet. So uh, the easiest way to test if they are actually adding is just to add more of them. So let's duplicate all three of them. So we have four fans, four dishes and four orbs. There we go. So now the first time it should say picking up two and the second time it should say four. There we go. So the inventory is actually adding and that's working. That's good. So let's start uh, setting up the pickup saves in the world. So first of all, I'm going to create a new folder and call it saved data. And in there, I'm going to create a new structure again. So let's right click blueprints and go to structure. And this is going to be the world info pickup item. So world info pickup item. And let's open it up and set it up. Uh, first of all, we need the item row name again. So item row name, and that's the name variable. And then we need an array of our inventory structure. So uh, this is going to be the item contents. And that's our inventory contents structure. And that's an array. And the last thing we need to put in here is a transform. So right now you will see the compiler over here filled, but if you simply add another variable that will solve itself. So we're going to add the world transform in here and turn this into a transform. And then again, a single variable. 
So we have the uh, structure set up and good to go. We can close this one down and we're going to create the save game. So let's right click, go to blueprint class and expand the all classes in here and look for a save game. Simply select it and create it. So this is going to be our save game game world. And let's open this one up as well. So in here we are going to add the array of inventory pickup world info. Uh, that's not the actual name, but okay. Let's just add it. So that's going to be all pickup actors. Uh, all pickup actors info. So that's going to be the array of world info pickup items. That was the name actually. So world info pickup item and turn it into a variable, an array, sorry. And we also need a boolean in here and that's uh, is first time loading map. So is first time loading uh, map. And that's going to be a single bool. So turn it into a single boolean. And for the first time loading map, we want to set the default value to true. So let's compile this and set it to true. Compile it again and we are good to go. Um, now we need a game instance. So let's go back to the inventory folder and I'm going to create a new blueprint class again. And this time look for the game instance. So select the normal one and create it. And let's call this something like a third person game instance. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we actually assign this game instance to our project. So let's go to edit and then project settings. And we need to go to the maps and modes tab again. And all the way down here, we have the game instance class. So let's turn it into our third person game instance. So we have that set up. And now let's create the actual game instance. So let me grab my notes in here. There we go go so we need to create uh, two functions in here the first one is initialize game world save so let's create a new function initialize game world save and in here we need a string as an input so we're going to input the save slot name And that's going to be a string. So first thing we are going to do, drag off here and promote this to a variable. And that's the game world save slot. So game world save slot. So we have that one stored. And then we're going to check if this one exists. So let's drag off here and do does save game exist. And we can simply plug in the variable. We're going to add a branch in here and hook it up. So what we're going to do is use the name of the actual level as the save slot name for the save game. So if you have multiple levels, it will save them uh, independently from each other. And we're simply going to use the name of the level to save everything in the correct slot. So first of all, if we checked uh, if it existed or not, so let's make sure that if it did, we are going to load it. So drag off here, load game from slot. And we want to load it from our game world save slot. And if we have that, we need to cast it. So it doesn't know what's it loading. So let's cast to our save game game world. And once we have that done, we can promote it to a variable as well. So that's our save game game world. So if it exists, we have it set up. If it doesn't exist, we're going to create it. So drag off here, create save game. Uh, create save game object and uh, if we expand the drop down menu we can select our save game game world uh, so this time it does know what it's creating so we don't need to cast it we can simply store it inside of our save game game world variable drag it on in here connect it up and then uh, because the actual save game object doesn't exist uh, well, it just created one, but I'm going to make sure that it's actually saved in the correct slot. So I'm going to drag off here and save game to slot. And we're going to save it to our game world save slot. 
So then the next time if we come in this function, it actually recognizes the correct save game. Um, so with that done, we can grab a return node in here. And we actually want to return the save game in the return node. So let's drag in the save game game world and drop it onto the return node. So we have this function set up and good to go. And the second one that we want to create is the update saved pickup actors. So let me grab my example in here quickly. Uh, it's not going to be too complicated. So first of all, let's just add it and then call it update saved pickup actors. And in here, we are going to need an array with all of the pickup actors. So the easiest way to do that, uh, uh, let's not do that because it actually messes up sometimes. So let's just create it manually. Um, that's going to be all pickup actors info. So all pickup actors info. And that's going to be an array with the world info pickup item. So world info world info pickup item turn it into an array and then we're going to drag off the save game game world and we're going to set all pickup actors info so uh, if you drag this one onto the input uh, for arrays it doesn't always work if it's a reference to the array and then it's going to mo moan about empty references and things like that so that's why i created it manually and we can simply drag it on here and after that we need to save it to slot so save game to slot plug it in oh really there we go and then we're going to plug in our game world save slot and that's good to go so we can return and we're done over here already so that's the game instance uh, let's continue working in the game mode So at the end of previous episode, I moved the game mode into the inventory map. Uh, if you didn't do it, it's inside the third person blueprints folder. So let's open up the third person game mode and we actually do not have anything in here yet. So let's open the blueprint editor and then uh, we are going to set up begin play. So let's right click and look for event begin play. The first thing we are going to do is search for our game instance. So get game instance and we need to cast it to our own game instance. So cast to third person game instance. Plug it in here and let's promote it to a variable. So we have that one set up and good to go. Then we're going to right click and get the current level name. So get current level name. Oh really? And for the level name, we can use that to get our save game. So then we can drag in our game instance. And in here, we have the initialize save game. So let's look for initialize game world save. Plug it in and plug in the level name. Then it's going to return the save game object. So let's drag off here and make sure that it's valid. It should be, but you never know. So that's good to go and then oh come on and then we're gonna drag off our save game game world again and the first thing we want to do is get our is first time loading map and plug this into a boolean and uh, we actually um, well, we're not going to use this right away, but in here, uh, if this is true, you can spawn your dynamic loot. So if you do not want to place all of your pickup actors and containers and stuff like that manually in the map, uh, which is most likely you don't want to do that, but you have some kind of procedural function or things like that, then you want to do that over here before uh, the actual logic for saving and loading kicks in. So that's why this boolean is here. Uh, we are going to simply continue from the full spin for now and uh, we can get back to this later. So for the full spin, we need a new function and that's going to be setup pickup actors. So let's create a new function and call it setup pickup actors. And I don't think we, oh, we do need inputs, so we're going to add uh, all pickup actors info, so that's the world info again. So 
open it up all pick up actors info and that's our world info pickup item and then an array of them and the boolean we are also going to pass that on so is first time loading map and that's just a single boolean and that's good to go so let's add a branch in here and plug in the boolean again so if it's the first time loading map then uh, let's add a print in here to make sure we know what's happening oh really i wanted to copy and paste it so there we go so no saved pickup data found saving world info to save game that's what i'm saying here so it knows i'm collecting data from the game world and saving it so we are going to drag off here and get all the actors of class and we simply want to get all of our pickups so look for bp pickup and this is going to turn them into an array so we're going to promote this array to a variable and that's all saved pickup actors so uh, promote to variable all saved pickup actors And we're going to keep this array synced uh, during the entire game. So we're going to use that later. We're also going to create a for each loop after this array, plug it in. And we're going to set up an array with the inventory pickup actor info. So let's create a new array again. And that's all saved pickup actors info. And that's an array of our world info pickup item turn it into an array so we're going to drag in the array and we're going to set an array element hook it up over here and make sure that you plug in the index so this way the indexes of these arrays will always match up and index one uh, pickup item belongs to the uh, saved actor info in index one so we need to drag off the item and make a world info pickup item so now we can drag off the array element and get the item row name and we can also get the item contents and we can also get the transform so drag off here again and get actor transform and simply plug everything into the structure and make sure that you enable size to fit so the array will actually expand and then uh, we can grab in our game instance so we have it saved as a variable over here and drag off here and we're going to say update saved pickup actors hook it up to the completed pin and then simply plug in our saved pickup actors info and that will save everything and that's all we need to do in this branch so we can grab a return node and we are good to go over here so let's go back to the other branch and first of all i'm going to add a print again so i'm going to say uh, saved pickup data found loading world contents from save game well it doesn't say from save game but that's what it's doing so we're gonna uh, first of all get all actors of class again so in the case we have uh, items set up in the level, we are going to delete them and load everything from our save game. So simply drag off here, get a for each loop, and we're going to uh, destroy actor. So drag off the array element, destroy actor, and plug it in over here. So uh, that way, if you go to the event graph and we use the is first time loading map, so we are not going to spawn the dynamic loot every time we are loading the map. We can simply load everything from our save game. So that's also why I added the boolean in here. It's just making everything a little bit more efficient. Um, okay, so we have, uh, after we deleted everything that's already in the level, we are simply going to uh, create everything from our save game. So we're going to get a for each loop again. And this time we can plug in the array that comes from the 
input pin so that uh, we can actually make this a little bit cleaner we do not need to uh, promote it to a local variable we can simply get all pickup actors info so if we go over here look for get all pickup actors info you will see it's actually here and we can simply plug it in and that's good to go and what we want to do over here is spawn an actor from class and we actually want to spawn our BP pickup and then we can plug in the item row name and the contents and we can get those from the structure so let's drag over here and break the world info pickup item plug in the item row name and the contents and we can also plug in the transform so it's actually in the correct location as well then we're going to make sure that it's valid so uh, it did actually spawn it's not blocked by collision or anything plug it in over here and if it's valid we're going to add it to all our saved pickup actors array so let's drag that in over here and let's add an item is valid then let's add it and this will return the index where it got added so then we can drag in our all safe pickup actors info and use the set array element again to make sure that the indexes will match up so we're going to plug in the index over here and we can actually get the item from the array element of the for each loop plug it in over here and make sure that it's size to fit and then we are uh, we should be good to go so we can uh, grab the completed pin of the for each loop and make sure that we plug it into the return node yeah we don't need to save it this time because we are loading it from the save game so it doesn't make sense to save it again so we can simply go back to the return node and that should be good and so this should be pretty much what we need to set up in the game mode now let's go back into the third person character and let's add some stuff in there okay we weren't entirely done in the game mode so let's open it back up uh, first of all obviously we need to make sure that we actually call the setup pickup actors function so let's drag it in here and we're going to connect it to the false pin and by the way we're also going to connect it to the true pin so in this case this doesn't really matter but we're going to get back to this later uh, we want to plug in the first time loading map pool and we want to drag off the save game and get all world actor pickup info so all pickup actors info oh, i should have picked another name <laughs> so uh, get it and plug it into the setup pickup actors and after that we're going to add another branch again and we're going to plug in the first time loading map boolean but this time we're actually going to use it so if it's uh, true then we're going to set it to false and store it in the save game so it's actually not the first time loading map anymore so we're going to get our uh, save game so that's on the third person game instance and we can simply get our save game game world and on the save game we can set is first time loading map so if this is true we're going to set it to false and then we're going to store the save game so drag off the save game game world and save game to slot and we want to use the slot name from the game instance so drag off here again and get the world save slot and plug it in so this will make sure it's actually only one time for the first time loading map so that makes sense uh, then we also need two more functions in here one to add a save pickup actor and one to remove one so let's create a new function add saved pickup actors or actor and in here we need an input and that's the actual pickup actor so that's the bp pickup and that's the type bp pickup so this is the add function so we want to there we go so we want to drag in our 
uh, all saved pickup actors array and then we're going to add a unique one so add unique plug it in plug in the pickup so if it's not a unique one it will return minus one so we're going to add a branch in here drag off the uh, integer that returns and we're going to check if it's greater than or equal to zero so if that's true then it's actually added to the array and if not uh, it's not added so something went wrong so i'm going to grab a print in here and i'm going to print adding pickup to save game field connect it up and that's then all we can do so if we did find it then we're going to add it to our save game so pick up add it to save game and then we can simply grab all our saved pickup info array drag off here and set an array element and we are going to use the new index and we need to create that over here so let's make a little bit of room and that actually is the index that returns from the add unique node so let's promote it to a local variable local new index and hook it up again so the index where the pickup actor is stored is also going to be the index in the saved pickup actors info array so let's drag in the new index plug it in and then the item that we want to save actually comes from the bp pickup over here so we can make it look a little bit cleaner right drag uh, right click get bp pickup although it's not a variable this works and then we're going to get the row name and we can get the item contents and we can also get the transform so get actor transform now we want to make this a new structure so we can drag off the item and make a world info pickup item struct plug everything in and then we have it stored in that array as well so then all we need to do is get our game instance in here and we can save it so let's drag in the third person game instance and update the saved pickup actors and plug in our array of saved pickup actors info and that's good to go so uh, return node and plug the other branch in as well and that one is done so now we need the same kind of function to remove a saved pickup actor so let's remove saved pickup actor so this removes or adds it to the save game just to clarify that so for the remove we also need an input and again that's the bb pickup so that's fine and then we can drag in all of our saved pickup actors drag off here and we're going to find so find item plug in the bp pickup so to make sure that it actually returns something uh, we're going to do the same thing as we did previously so first of all we're going to drag off here promote to local variable and that's the local index to remove and then we need to make sure that this is greater than or equal to zero so if it's not it didn't find it in the array so let's add a greater than or equal to and plug that into a branch so if this is false then the pickup remove from save game failed so i'm just going to add a print in here pickup remove from save game failed and if it's true then we can actually uh, remove it from the save game so pick up oh really oh yeah pick up removed from save game but the text is green so this time it didn't fail and then we can drag in both of our arrays so the save pickup actors and the save pickup actors info a drag off here and we're going to remove the index and simply use the local index to remove and plug that into both of those so let's grab a second node and plug everything in as well 
And after that, we can grab our game instance and update the saved pickup actors. And plug in the array of pickup actors info. And that's all we need to do. So hook everything up and grab ourselves a return node. There we go. So now we do have the game mode done and we can actually set up some stuff in the character. So let's open up our third person character and inside of the event graph I'm going to add an event possessed. So I'm grabbing event possessed because that only executes on the server and we're going to make sure that all of our pickup logic will also run on the server and we're only going to replicate some uh, HUD stuff and things like that to the owning clients. And because we created some stuff on the game mode, we actually need to be the server to access the game mode. So we're grabbing event possessed and that makes sure that this only fires on the server. So then we can uh, right click and look for our game mode. So get game mode and we need to cast it to our third person game mode. Cast to third person game mode. And then we can simply promote it to a variable for later. So promote to variable. And that's really all we are doing in event possessed right now. So we can go into our add item to inventory. And you want to go to the first for each loop. And from here uh, continue from the completed pin. And we're simply going to drag in our third person game mode. And in here, because we are adding an item to our player's inventory, that means we need to remove it from the actual world uh, save game. So we are going to remove a saved pickup actor. And make sure that we plug this in before the return node, obviously. And we can grab the pickup actor from the input node. And that's all we need to do. So now if we pick up an actor from the world, it will get removed from the save game. So it will not be there the next time we load the level. So I'm launching the level for the first time. And as you can see in the top left, no pickup data found, saving world info to save game. So that should be good. Now let's just grab one of these fans. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to close the level. And now if I hit play again, saved pickup data found loading world contents and you will see the fan is not there now my player inventory doesn't save yet so that's not persistent but the world inventory updates and saves so we have that set up uh, now we do need to make sure that we can also uh, remove an item from the player inventory so we're gonna create the remove item from inventory and make sure that we drop a pickup into the world and then we're gonna call it a day so inside of our character, let's create a new function, remove item from inventory. And in here, we are going to add uh, the array of item contents. So let's add a new input and that's the item info. And that's our item contents array. So inventory contents and then turn it into an array. And I'm also going to add a boolean in here. And that's going to be drop into world. There we go. And that's a boolean and a single variable. So for now I'm going to make it that if we hit F when we're not standing on a pickup. Then we're going to drop the first pickup inside of our inventory into the world. So that's just going to be a little easy way to test it. Uh, later we're going to set up dragging and dropping from the UI and we can drag an item out outside of our inventory grid and it will drop into the world. So then we're not going to use this anymore but it's going to be a little while before we get there. And right now we want to be able to test some stuff so I'm going to add it up, uh, set it up to use a boolean and then we can simply drop the first item in the inventory with a key on our keyboard. Okay, so let's add a branch in here. And first I want to make sure that our player inventory is not empty. So drag in the player inventory array and then is not empty. Plug it into our branch. So then we're going to add another branch. And if this is true, we want to know if we are dropping this into the world or not. So let's get drop into world. 
and let's do the true pin first so what i'm gonna do is grab a line trace by channel so the top one line trace by channel and i'm gonna start the trace at my own location so get actor location and then i am gonna get my up vector so let's right click and do get actor up vector and for the uh, actor location i'm gonna plug that into the start pin and then we're gonna drag off the up vector and actually multiply it with minus 500 so that's going to make it our down vector uh, so let's convert this pin into an integer and multiply it with minus 500 so instead of going up we're going down and then we can simply add it to our actor location so let's grab an add and plug in the outcome from the multiplier and we can plug that into our trace end so i'm going to trace by visibility that's fine and we want to ignore ourselves and we could enable the duration so we can see if it's working or not so i'm using 500 in case i'm jumping off a ledge or something you could increase or decrease this if you would like to so i'm gonna grab a branch in here and make sure that i actually hit something so let's plug this into the return value and we're gonna break the out hit here as well there we go so I am going to grab the location and promote it to a local variable and that's the local drop location. And we want to plug this one into the true pin. So if we actually hit something we're going to use the location of the trace and if we didn't hit something we're simply going to use our actor location. So let's plug this in here and we're going to grab our get actor location node and plug it in here so in case we cannot decide where we want to spawn it we're going to spawn it at our own location so let's continue by getting a spawn actor from class and plug this in here so uh, we are making sure that the server is running all this logic so the server can spawn this and this will replicate to the other clients because we have our pickup set up as replicated so let's uh, select our bp pickup and then we want to define the item contents so we are simply going to drop the first item in our inventory array and we can plug that in later because it's coming from the input pin actually so we can just get the item info and then we can get the first one in the array so get a copy and break this plug in the item row name and plug in the item info into the item contents and then that's good to go so we're going to make sure that this is valid and if it's valid we're going to add it to the save game so we need to drag in our third person game mode and then we're going to add a saved pickup actor and we can plug in the return value from the spawn actor from class into the bp pickup and that should save it so in case we do not want to drop an item into the world, we may want to move it inside of a chest or something. So then we're going to use the false pin from this branch. So we're going to grab it for each loop and let's hook it up to the false pin over here. And we also want to make sure that we hook it up to the other execution pin after we dropped an item into the world. So then we're going to plug in the item info that comes from the input of the function. So let's get item info. And for this for each loop we're going to create a bunch of local variables again. So that makes it a little bit easier to make sure that everything is in the correct values. So let's break our inventory structure over here and we're going to promote the item row name to a local variable and that's local item to remove. And we also want to promote the item amount and that's going to be the local amount to remove. So local amount to remove 
and that's an integer that's fine so let's hook these ones up and we also need a boolean in here by the way so that's local uh, item found so let's add a new variable local item found and turn it into a bool and make sure that over here we set it to false and i'm also going to create the current amount in inventory and the item index so local current amount in inventory so that's an integer again and then we have the local item index and that's also an integer so for these two we don't really need to do it but i'm just gonna plug them in here and set them to zero to make sure that everything is reset for our next for each loop because in here we're gonna grab a second for each loop plug it in and we're gonna uh, plug in our player inventory this time and we simply want to compare the item row names so if we have an item inside of our inventory we need to remove the correct one so let's break the inventory contents and compare this to the item to remove so the reason i'm setting uh, all of these variables in here to defaults is because we are using a for each loop inside of a for each loop so after this for each loop is completed uh, there may be another loop body in here so uh, if it goes in here again and we don't reset the item found for example uh, this will mess everything up so if you're using multiple for each loops uh, make sure that you take care resetting everything and make sure that everything has the correct values inside of it so let's plug this into a branch over here and uh, I'm already messing this up again because we need a for each loop with break just like we did the last time and let's move over the pins so that way we can stop the for each loop if we know what we want to know and we're not actually wasting uh, resources so we're going to set our item found boolean to true if we actually find an item and then we're going to grab our current amount in inventory plug it in and that's the amount that comes from the item contents and we're also going to set our item index and that's the index of the for each loop so that's the index inside of our player inventory and then we can plug this into the break so we are done with our loop There we go. And we're going to continue from the completed pin. So first we're going to grab a branch and we want to know if we found an item or not. So we should, but you never know. Uh, so if that's false, we can't really do anything. We can add a print in here. So uh, item to remove not found. And then we at least know something went wrong. Then we're going to add a second branch in here, plug it in, and we're going to grab our local current amount in inventory, and we're going to subtract the item amount to remove. Plug that in as well. So we want to know if this is greater than or equal to 1. So let's drag off here, greater than or equal, and make sure this is 1, and plug it into the branch. So we can set our local new amount variable and we don't have it yet. So let's create it local new amount and that's an integer. So if this is true, we're going to set this to the outcome over here. So let's plug, uh, grab the outcome from the subtract and plug it into the new amount. And if this is false, we can simply set it to zero to make sure that we don't end up with negative numbers for now. So local new amount is zero. And let's continue with the top branch first. So we're going to grab our player inventory array and we want to set an array element. So in this case, uh, we have some items left in the array. So we need to make sure that we don't remove it, but we just set the item amount. So we can uh, grab the item index from the local variables. So that's the item index that returns from our for each loop here. And we can make a new structure and simply plug in our uh, item to remove and then the new amount and that should update. 
so that's good to go and for the lower branch we can simply remove the index so we're going to grab our player inventory array and remove an index and that's the local item index so again the index that comes from the for each loop okay so that should be the loop body for now we do not have any huts to update or things like that so then we can go back to the first for each loop and in here we actually want to uh, call our save current inventory again uh, oh I'm sorry I'm messing up we do not have a saved player inventory yet and we are already saving the pickup actor over here so we do not need to add anything to the for each loop for now uh, so I screwed up the spawn actor we need to grab the spawn transform and that's actually the value inside of our drop location so let's get the local drop location and make a transform and for the rotation I'm going to use my actor rotation so let's right click and get actor rotation and I'm going to split it and just use the yaw value for the rotation so we also need to split it over here and plug in the yaw and then that way it kind of follows the player rotation and then I think we should be good so let's compile and save it and now if we go back into the event graph we can add a simple way to drop an item so if we go to the server interact with interactable function let's make a little bit of room below here so if the interactable actor is not valid so we're not actually standing on top of a pickup but you're, we are just pressing our interact button somewhere in the level then we're going to drop an item at that location so we can simply uh, drag off here and remove item from inventory and then we want to drop it into the world so let's enable that and we can simply drop the first item inside of our array so let's get our player inventory array in here and we're going to get a copy and to make sure that we're not actually dropping all of the items but only one we can break the structure over here and then over here we are going to make an array and for this array we're going to make a structure so we can plug in the item row name and simply set the item amount to one that way we only drop one at a time so hopefully this works so we're gonna have a look and see what happens so as i mentioned the player inventory doesn't save so we need to make sure that we pick something up first we have an orb and a dish right now and if i press f i'm dropping the orb and if i press f again i'm dropping another orb because i picked up two of them so that actually makes sense and then if i press f again i'm dropping a dish and then another dish and if i press f now nothing happens because my inventory is empty and after we did this we could actually close it down and open this back up and it should have saved but it didn't so something messed up over there i'm going to check what's wrong and get back to you guys okay that shouldn't be too bad if we go inside the third person game mode and go inside of the add saved pickup actors function so in here we're setting an array element but we didn't set a size to fit so if the array isn't big enough we need to make sure that we expand the array and that should pretty much take care of our issue so if we try this again so there's a few less pickups now because some of them got lost but we're going to pick up two orbs and we're going to drop two of them and let's close the game down open it up and this time it actually worked so we have the pickups saving and loading now to make sure that we can reset everything i'm just going to go into my explorer and if you go to the project folder in here so that's uh, mp inventory there's a folder saved and in there save games and you can simply delete your save game to make sure that everything resets again 
So now the save game is empty and I'm going to grab a second player in here, make sure that I play as a listen server and let's test if everything works in multiplayer as well. So we have the server saving all the pickups into the save game right now. And let's see, we are a client on this side. So I'm going to pick up two orbs and I'm going to pick up two fans and I'm going to drop them on top of this little circle over here. There we go. And now let's uh, close this down and let's open it up again. And everything should still be in place. So we have two fans and two orbs over there. So that's working. And if I check this out on the server side, they are also there. So this should also work the other way around. If I pick up a dish as the server and I'm going to drop them over here. So they should be persistent if I close and reopen this. And we have the dishes still in place as well. So we have the pickups saving and loading in the world and we actually started a little bit of our player inventory as well. So that's everything for today. I think it's been a pretty long video already. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and you are free to join the discord and talk about some game dev stuff or ask questions about the video if you want to as well. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, talk to you later. Bye bye.